I pray that you would increase our hunger and our thirst for your righteousness. That you would spread that hunger throughout this land. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, for those of you on Facebook or on our website, CrestlineFBC at MSN.com, um, it looks like you're going in and out sometimes. <laughs> I apologize. We have had um, probably eight to ten hours that we have worked on the Internet here at the church this week. Uh, when we get the uh, our uh, thing seems that the slides messed up too there, Jonathan. Uh, when we get our uh, internet working, uh, the the, uh, the man that's actually been out here uh, has actually said, look, it's working on my phone, it's working wherever he goes in here, and then all of a sudden he leaves and it starts to disconnect again, which it just did just now. <laughs> so, um, and that, dear, do you want to just check and see if they... The internet's not coming up in there? No. <laughs> That's why it's blinking on and off. Lord, this is your ministry, and we frankly are frustrated by the electronics that hinder us from getting your word out. So God, be glorified here today. I sure would love it if you could cause the internet just to work without interruption. And I know that everything about the new routers and the new modems and everything supposedly works back there and everything with spectrums is working, but it's not working here. So God, do something, please, to make it work, to make it stay on. And if not, God, then show us what we're supposed to do to move forward with trying to use these tools in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> So, some people are hungry for our internet. <laughs> I just need to not watch. And some people are hungry for our internet to, to work. And I'm sure anyone that's watching this at home, they're like, okay, forget it. They probably already shut it off uh, probably 30 minutes ago. I don't know. But maybe they'll come back and um, just keep, keep praying that God gets his message out. You know, God's called us to be his people at this time. And for such a time as this, God has called us. And as we've been going through these Beatitudes, it's because we're trying to see what it means to really be, be blessed by God and what God wants to do in our lives. And, and, and there's some things here for us to learn, especially this week again. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for holiness, for God himself to be living out in our lives. Blessed are those, because Jesus says, they will be filled up. And one of the statements, one of the things we need to learn from these Beatitudes is they're not necessarily a statement saying, if you don't do this, you're not going to get blessed. But instead, for those who are pure in heart, for example, for those who are humble and meek, for those who, who, who have actually broken down and are, and are grieving, for those who are seeking after righteousness with all that's within them, God's going to bless them with a satisfied and full heart. He's going to fill them up. By the way, is anybody hungry today? Let me see if I can help you out. Think about something you really enjoy eating. Not just a sweet thing, but maybe something like it. Does anybody like steak? Steak. Barbecued steak. No, you don't like barbecue. Does anybody like grilled vegetables? On the grill, okay. Uh, or, or grilled fish, even. Or uh, do you, does, dear, do you like prime rib? Okay. How about, how about, here's one of the things that Debbie likes to make. She makes this like French bread. It's really unhealthy. I want you to start to feel a little bit of what it means to hunger and thirst after righteousness. <clears throat> now, let me see if uh, I still have the message working on my laptop. <laughs> Isaiah 26, verse 9 says, My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. 
When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world will learn righteousness. The question we want to ask ourselves as we get started here, are you hungry for the righteousness of God? Do you have a hunger for what is important to him? Phil Newton says that when a man is hungry, the only thing that will satisfy him is food. He has no interest in other things. You can show him diamonds and jewels, houses and land, but if he is starving, his only desire is for food. He realizes that all those other things that people eat, but you can't drink because it's going to fill up liquid into your lungs and into your heart and it's going to kill you. Are you thirsty? You remember what David said in Psalm 63? When he was in the desert of Judah, he's out there struggling to stay alive. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I've got water that if you drink of it, you'll never be thirsty again. Good, give me that water because I want to quit coming out here and drawing this water out of this well. Oh no, the water is even better than that. Of course, then she's going to talk about her sin and then she's going to talk about um, trying to distract Jesus to talk about uh, where to worship and all that. But Jesus has a mission. He wants her to understand that he is life-giving water and that the refreshment of God can only come through him. She'll go into town. The disciples, or just before she goes, the disciples come out and they brought food because they went into town to buy food because Jesus and the disciples are all hungry. And they offer the food to Jesus. You remember what happens? Just then his disciples returned. This is John 4, 27. And they were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? So they were good in this case. <laughs> Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, hmm, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Romans 8 verse 10 says, But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness, not because you are so good, but because you've been given a righteousness by Jesus Christ. He describes it further in Romans 10. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. What were they doing? They're setting their own level. Okay, Here's what good is. Here's what right is. Here's what holiness is. Here's what it means to be with God. Here's how I get to heaven. And what? Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things who will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. What is righteousness? Is it feeling good about ourselves? Or having our friend... This is an intense focus on hungering and thirsting to be in right standing with God. It brings satisfaction and contentment to our whole being. Our part is to hunger and thirst for it, to keep it as our most intense craving. Then God will fill us. Incidentally, righteousness is not merely the absence of sin. 
It's allowing God to fill us up with his holiness. It's becoming like Christ. Jesus is our model who sought who sought God out fast that comes in the first couple days when the stomach really growls and you really want to eat something. <clears throat> Here's the fact. We all get hungry. We eat, we get filled, and we get hungry again, right? That's the way it is with God's righteousness too. We hunger and we thirst for God's righteousness and we do that again and again and again. And the word that he'll use next is, you will be filled. It's not a, you'll be filled once and then you don't need to eat ever again. But you will be filled up every time you're hungry. You're Death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. That's Isaiah, folks. That's the Old Testament. That's the declaration that Jesus is going to bring into reality and revelation when he's going to wipe away the tears from our eyes, when he's going to set up that new banqueting table and we're going to feast in heaven. And Isaiah is preparing us for that. You remember what Jesus said, John 6? He's talking to the crowd. It kind of upset them. The first phrase sounded okay. He said, I'm the bread of life. And he that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes in me shall never thirst. He went on in that same passage. Or I, I want to back up a couple of verses. He said, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. In verse 32, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You hunger and thirst for a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Because if you want it, Jesus will give you a closer walk with God. If you want it, you can have a better marriage. Ray Bridger says, if you want to, you can do God's will. If you want to, you can grow spiritually. If you want to, you can become a man of God or a woman of God. If you want to, you can change deeply ingrained habits. If you want to, you can break destructive patterns of behavior. Do you want to? I found an uh, interesting version of the 23rd Psalm. It's called the Television Psalm. It reads like this, the TV is my shepherd, I shall not want. It makes me to sit down and do nothing for its name's sake. Because it requires all my spare time, well, maybe we should substitute the computer or video games here. <laughs> Facebook, well, let me get back to it. It re oh, Christ. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones says, are we filled? Have we got this satisfaction? Are we aware of this dealing of God with us? Is the fruit of the Spirit being manifested in our lives? Are we concerned about that? Are we experiencing love to God and to other people? Joy and peace. Are we manifesting long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, faith, and temperance? Do we know that we have received the life of God? Are we enjoying the life of God in our souls? 
are we aware <clears throat> are we aware of the Holy Spirit and all his mighty work working with him forming Christ in us more and more are you hungry December she couldn't get out up and down but she could slide right and left she found a jar, a um, pound and a half jar of strawberry jam, and she fed that to her little four-year-old daughter. Um, she, uh, and, then, and this little girl, <clears throat> Gayeni is her name, started saying, Mommy, I'm thirsty. Mommy, please give me something to drink. And that went on for a few days. They were actually down there for eight days. She, didn't, she had completely lost a um, sense of time. They were in the dark completely. They couldn't see hardly anything. And so she kept crying out, Mommy, Mommy, I'm thirsty. Gayeni's mommy, Susanna, decided that she needed to do something to try to save her daughter's life and keep her somehow alive. She figured she was going to die. She was going to try to do something for her daughter. So somehow she had heard some reports at one point in time about a person in the Arctic, two men in the Arctic, and the one actually cut his finger and gave his blood to the other to keep the other man alive. And remembering that, she felt around and she found a piece of glass. It was so cold that she could hardly feel her hands anyway, so she cut her finger and gave it to her daughter. The daughter sucked on her finger and then she said, more, mommy, more, cut another finger. Nobody knows how many actual days that went on. On the eighth day, a little light broke through as rescuers finally started coming down to find where, where they were. Um, turns out that with those rescuers was Susanna's husband, Guyani's father. They pulled them both out, took both of them to intensive care. The little girl was suffering from shock. Her blood was thick. She almost died. The doctors have different opinions about this. Some say she would have survived anyways, although she was about to die. Um, but others say, no, she, she survived because her mother gave her blood in order to keep her alive. Both actually survived, which is even more miraculous and amazing. But the story has a message for, it, for us, doesn't it? Like that mother who gave her blood to give life to her daughter, that's exactly what Jesus Christ has done for us. To hunger and thirst for righteousness is to hunger and thirst for Jesus Christ. And to do that, and yes, it upset the disciples on the day that Jesus said it. When he's standing there and he said, I'm the bread of life, he went on to say, and you need to eat my body and you need to drink my blood. And a bunch of disciples grossed out and left and stopped following Jesus. But I hope not so with us. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty for Jesus Christ? You see, you don't get the righteousness of Jesus unless you drink from the blood of Jesus Christ. And folks, notice, you don't drink just once. I look around the room. You probably all have already committed your life to Jesus Christ. You probably could go back to a day when you say, I remember when Jesus came into my life. You ate from the bread and you drank from the cup. And Jesus became real to you. But notice, the hunger and thirst for righteousness, the hunger and thirst for Jesus must continue until you get to the banqueting table in heaven. So are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you doing what you need to do to eat from the table?